Okay. Acknowledgements, announcements, and correspondence. Mr. Hulmart. Yes, uh, Chair Rubio and members of the board, I have a few announcements for your consideration. The first being that uh, this weekend, I'm sure everyone is fully aware, is Veterans Day weekend, and on Sunday at the Central Coast Veterans Cemetery in the great city of Seaside will be a ceremony. It will be at 10.30 a.m. in the morning. Also on Sunday on uh, November the 11th, there's going to be another celebration right here in the great city of Marina where there will be the Veterans Transition Center is going to be having its inaugural gala. There are other events that will be happening all weekend. I notice Mayor Gunter is not here, but I know there's a parade in Salinas, and just about everyone is acknowledging veterans this weekend, so I know all of you will keep that in mind. On Monday, November 12th, uh, we will be closing the four office. It's always done for a celebration for Veterans Day, so Monday we will not be open. The last uh, announcement is on f to remind everyone that on Friday, November 30th, is the fourth annual State of the Region Conference that's being put on by the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. That'll be at uh, the Embassy Suites in Seaside from 8.30 to 5 p.m. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you want to make a announcement? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, we've had a lot of changes going on. I first of all wanted to introduce um, Mayor-elect for Pacific Grove, Bill Peake, who's sitting in the back row over here. And um, I, I, you know, we'll have changes. The people who who are finishing their terms, there are people who will have different assignments. And I just wanted to say what an extraordinary opportunity it's been to serve with all of you folks. Um, the mentorship has been terrific, and the um, camaraderie and working together has been wonderful. Not that I'm planning to leave, but that's up to him. Um, so <laughs> anyway, just wanted to have a moment to say that. Well, I'll just take a moment to say that your input has been greatly appreciated. You've always been a voice of reason sometimes when it gets kind of dark in here. So we thank you for that. Okay. Yes, Ms. Hardy. Is on. Oh, there it is. I would. Um, I'm surprised to hear myself say, "Be delighted to stay on with this committee," <laughs> because it does take a great deal of time. But uh, in any case, I've appreciated the opportunity to serve, and uh, the future will be the future. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. In that vein, the clerk has just handed me three special resolutions, chair, that she considers to be an urgent item, and I'd like to know if. Uh, uh, those can be introduced uh, for consideration at this time. I'd make a motion that one, one of these resolutions acknowledges um, a, a, a member of the Seaside City Council that may be moving on. Another represents uh, recognition of two mayors that may be moving on after their elections. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Whew. Got a unanimous vote. Chair, if I may, and ask the maker of the motion if it's okay if I read each of these resolutions into the record individually. I'll begin with a special resolution of the Fort Ord Reuse Authority, a resolution of the governing body acknowledging the city of Seaside Mayor Pro Tem Dennis Alexander. It is hereby resolved by the Fort Ord Reuse Authority Board of Directors that whereas Dennis Alexander served as member of the Fort Ord Reuse Authority from December 2014 to November 2018, and whereas Mr. Alexander served as City of Seaside Council Member working diligently on military-based reuse public safety, services for seniors and youth in important seaside and regional former Fort Ord recovery issues, and whereas Dennis made significant and valuable contributions to former Fort Ord projects, especially those producing benefits for local residents, and whereas Mr. Alexander is known for his assertive, uh, no-nonsense, bombastic, take-charge style, and whereas Mr. <laughs> Alexander represented foreign munitions removal contract meetings with the United States Army Headquarters Base Realignment and Closure Office 
And whereas during Mr. Alexander's tenure on the four board, a number of major projects moved toward creating jobs, economic development, and regional infrastructure, greatly helping all Fort Ord jurisdictions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that on behalf of the Fort Ord staff, the board of directors, and their respective staffs, and many others, the Fort Ord Reuse Authority Board of Directors extends its sincere appreciation for Mr. Alexander's years of dedicated service and wishes him every success in future endeavors. Michael, thank you very much, and thank you all. Um, yeah, you know, for everything you mentioned that I was involved in, I, I was only here for three, three years, I think, so or two or three years, so I uh, uh, have to think back about all those things. But uh, it, I've learned so much uh, being part of this board. I really did. You know, I um, I served on other boards before this, and still on AMBAG. Uh, uh, but but I learned so much being on this board, and uh, appreciate the dedication of all of you um, in working diligently for a um, a, a co cohesive um, effort to make better uh, with this land that we've been um, been working with for, for a couple of decades now. So thank you all. Good luck with everything in the future. And um, um, I, I, lo I look forward to the next endeavor for myself as well. So thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. okay. So Chair, uh, uh, these motions can be taken individually later if you'd like. Uh, the next resolution is for someone that will be uh, still participating in the board meetings uh, this month, uh, but he will be stepping down next month. It'll be Delray Oaks Mayor Jerry Edelman. It is hereby resolved by the Fort Ord Reuse Authority Board of Directors that whereas Jerry Edelman has served as Mayor of Delray Oaks since September of 2009, and whereas Mayor Edelman has served as both chair and is currently a director of the Fort Ord Reuse Authority, but he's been here for more than a decade, and whereas Mayor Edelin has also served the region on the Transportation Agency for Monterey County, the Monterey Peninsula Region Water Authority, and many other boards and committees, and whereas Mayor Edelin graduated from Monterey High School, received a bachelor's science degree in engineering from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, a master's degree from Stanford University, and another master's degree from Long Island University, and whereas Mayor Edelin retired from the United States Army in 1992 as an Airborne Ranger Lieutenant Colonel, being awarded the Legion of Merit. He currently serves as Vice Division Commander of the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary 6th Division. I think I have the numbers right here. And as the Public Affairs Officer of the Coast Guard Auxiliary District governing Northern California, Nevada, and Utah. And whereas Mayor Jerry Edelin is known to enjoy leisurely walks through the Fort Ord trails and occasionally stopping to capture the scent of the local fauna. With a proper propensity to exaggerate his walks as a run, <laughs> he has also accumulated a robust collection of motor vehicles, including an MRAP. And whereas <laughs> Mayor Jerry Edelin actively supported efforts to improve the lives of active duty and retired military personnel and their families with his leadership on the Fort Ord Reuse Authority Veterans Issues Advisory Committee and supported the development of the California Central Coast Veterans Cemetery and the General William H. Corley Medical Clinic. And whereas Mayor Edelin was instrumental in advancing former Fort Ord recovery projects and ma maintaining the City of Del Rey Oaks fiscal solvency, now therefore be it resolved that the Fort Ord Reuse Authority Board of Directors expresses its appreciation to Mary Jer Mayor Jerry Edelin through this resolution for his extraordinary contributions to the reuse of the former Fort Ord and to the citizens of Monterey County, wishing him every success in all future endeavors. I wasn't expecting this at all. Um, uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody. Just a couple of thoughts. Uh, again, this is impromptu. Uh, I've been an elected office uh, now for about 20 years, uh, on this board for nine years plus. Uh, this, this board is probably the most maligned, misunderstood uh, board that, we, that I've, ever, I've ever seen in 20 years of elected office. You do good work here. The problem is the construction of this board with the, with the uh, first vote, second vote, with the competing uh, uh, interests and so forth makes it very, very difficult to get anything done. But in spite of all that, you've done a hell of a lot. 
uh, I, I was going to say something about Michael last night. He was going to come up to our city council meeting, just very quickly, because Michael's been a mentor on this board for a long time. You know, we all go back once a year during this, during uh, uh, to Washington D.C. to lobby for for our, our causes. I had a chance a couple years ago back with Michael, and uh, we walked into and I'll, I'll mention the name because it's all we're all family. Uh, uh, Tom Leverley's office. He's a BRAC office in charge, and he was also in charge of the Veterans uh, uh, Central uh, Coast Cemetery, or in charge of the Central Cemetery type of uh, requesting, uh, ha having one put in. And I walked in and saw on the wall a 101st Airborne uh, patch uh, f given to him, known as the Screaming Eagles, and I turned to Tom and said, oh, you were in the puking buzzards, weren't you? And uh, he looked at me and said, you're almost airborne? I said, yeah, 82nd. And we were, we've been good friends ever since. Well, anyhow, Michael, uh, uh, we sat down at the table, and Michael said, look, we're trying to get established on the uh, Central Coast of Veterans Cemetery. And Tom says, well, what do you want to do? And he says, I want a columbarium. I want in-ground burials. And uh, Tom says, no, you don't. And Michael said, yes, I do. And he says, let me show you something. He took us over to a table. There was a binder a foot thick, an ab a foot thick binder. He says, that's a request for columbariums and burials. See that binder over there? It was about half an inch. That's the request for columbariums, okay? And Michael says, but we want in-ground burials and columbariums. Uh, and he, and uh, Tom says, you don't understand. It's, it's easy to get a columbarium burial, and once it's in ground, all you have to do is request an upgrade, and we'll do it automatically. Uh, that was he said he did that to Michael because Michael's relationship in Washington D.C. was such he was able to get the job done. Anybody else walking in that office would never have done that. Uh, that's that's the power of of this man and his relationship in Washington D.C. Not only did we get that done, as we walked out, he goes, "Need some money? Uh, yeah. Uh, can you use a planning grant? Uh, I guess so." So we walked out with money also. So I just want to I want to thank uh, uh, Michael. And I want to thank the staff. The staff here is also maligned. I mean, you people are outstanding. Here, the the entire the entire staff go. The, the organization will probably go away within uh, 19 months, less than two years. And you guys are you're dedicated. You're holding on there. You you owe we owe you all a debt, a debt of thought. And just one last thought, and that is the hardest thing about being an elected office for, for 20 years. It's not leaving. It's watching the good people that we have here leave. You know, you work with people for two years or four years or whatever else, and they're there for a while and they're gone the next. And the hardest thing is, is you know, when they leave, you're going, oh my God, there's a gap in the organization. What, how are we going to survive? Well, you'll survive, but new people come in and you move on. And what you do is you look around the table and you basically see ghosts of people who have been there for many, many years. So uh, anyhow. I just want to thank everybody for the uh, the work. We still have 19 months to go. We, you're not looking back at what we've done in the past and all the all the negative, pardon the expression, crap about uh, the, the rumors about what Floor, Floor has done in the past because they may not agree with what the outcomes were. That's one thing. We're looking forward to the future. We have 19 months. Let's get the job done within 19 months for the good of the entire organization. Thank you. Chair, thank you, Jerry. Uh, Chair, the last one is... Uh, for the mayor of the city of Seaside. Um, it is hereby resolved by the Fort Ord Reuse Authority Board of Directors that, whereas Ralph Rubio served as a member of the Fort Ord Reuse Authority Board from December 2004 through November 2010, and as chair from January 2009 to November 2010, and then again from November 2012 through December of 2018, and as chair from 2017 through the present time, providing leadership, creativity, and focus in addressing the complex issues facing military base reuse. Whereas Mr. Rubio has served as mayor of the city seaside for 12 years, focusing his attention on developing jobs and economic health for seaside citizens including ensuring future safety and opportunity central role in the munitions removal programs. And whereas Mayor Rubio made significant and valuable contributions to the Monterey Bay Regional Recovery from the Fort Ord closure by providing the highest quality support for workers in this region and his advocacy for workers' rights and livable wages goes on in re in, in his rep with his reputation. And whereas during Mr. Rubio's tenure on the Fort Ord Board, more than $120 million in federal grant funding was received 
to create jobs, economic development, and infrastructure, and to remove dangerous munitions from the human environment. All of this benefiting the Monterey, Santa Cruz, and San Benito region. Whereas Ralph Rubio de deployed his responsibilities in a professional, dedicated, reasonable, and thoughtful manner, demonstrating the highest personal integrity. And whereas Mayor Rubio was known to encourage active reuse of Fort Ord by conducting important and sustainable outdoor fundraising recreational activities on Seaside's premier golf courses. And whereas Chair Rubio set aside personal and family interests, among other significant sacrifices, to sustain his public service commitment to an inclusive, patient, and welcoming approach. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of the Fort Ord Reuse Authority acknowledges Ralph Rubio's priceless contributions to the redevelopment of the former Fort Ord. And on behalf of all of us here, we send best wishes to Ralph. Thank you, Michael. Gosh, no wonder I'm so tired. <laughs> you know, uh, in all seriousness, uh, this has been one of the one of the most important assignments I've had as as mayor, as a council member, as a citizen of the of the region, is to work on this board and try to find solutions. However, however difficult it might be. Or, or just trying to ferret out a, a path towards a solution. But it wouldn't work without a lot of people pushing at the same time. And um, what I've seen here over the years is a lot of good people working really hard to make these things happen. I find that at the end of the, uh, of the road here, that things get kind of frayed now that uh, we're supposed to be dissolving and you would expect that it would get frayed because it's coming apart. But we still have to maintain that objective of a regional solution for what goes on here. And we mustn't lose sight of the folks that were put out and put aside for this to happen. And we need to make sure that they have the affordable housing and the jobs that will let them be 100% fully engaged citizens in our in our community. If they're out scratching for two or three jobs, they don't have time for the issues. So let's let's see what we can do as a board to make sure they have time to grapple with the issues like everybody else can. And um, I want to thank all of you. You've all become friends. This is a um, I've had some friendships here that have endured over time. I get to I get to uh, meet a new colonel every three years, and I still I still call several of them friends, and I want to I want to thank the staff for the great job that they've done over time, and they've done an incredible job of making me look good, because uh, without them, it doesn't happen. So uh, I wish you all the best of luck, and uh, I'll be I'll be watching. You know, I can't. I can't keep out of it. I just, I'll be around. <laughs> so, uh, thank you again so much. Uh, this is uh, really humbling. Thank you. You need a so, motion. Yeah. Supervisor Parker, your comment is correct. We do need a motion for each of the resolutions. I don't know that we need three separate ones. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very good. Two unanimous in a row. I like it. Start a trend. Yes, ma'am. I just also want to note, since I noticed that all the acknowledgements and announcements are now, 
um, that I, this is my last for a board meeting for probably a good couple, five or six months. Um, so while I might not physically be here, we will be watching and our Sacramento office is very engaged in Fora and I will be in contact with Dominique about who to um, keep um, up to date with correspondence. So just wanted to note that um, Senator Monning is still very involved even though I might not be physically sitting here. Thank you. And we appreciate your time as well. You've been a good advocate for us. Thank you. Okay, the next time is a closed session. Would you like to read this in? Yes, thank you, Chair, uh, members of the board and public. Um, item 4A, Conference with Legal Counsel, Government Code Section 54956.9A D1, Keep Fort Ord Wild versus Fort Ord Reuse Authority, Monterey County Superior Court Case Number 17CV4540, Pending Litigation. Uh, 4B is Conference with Legal Counsel, Government's co uh, Code Section 54956.9A D1, Marina Community Partners LLC versus Fort Ord Reuse Authority, Monterey County Superior Court Case Number 18CV871, also pending litigation, and 4C, Conference with Legal Counsel, Potential Litigation, Government Code Section 54956.9D4. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's uh, get back to our meeting. Um, Authority Council, would you read us out? Yes, thank you, Chair. Members of the board and public, um, the board met in closed session on item 4A, Conference with Legal Counsel, Government Code Section 54956.9 AD1, Keep Fort Ord Wild versus Fort Ord Reuse Authority, Monterey County Superior Court Case Number 17CV4540, pending litigation. Uh, the court, uh, the council uh, explained the status of the matter to the uh, to the board members, and there is no reportable action uh, on that item. Item 4B, Conference with Legal Counsel, Government Code Section 54956.9A D1, Marina Community Partners versus Fort Ord Reuse Authority, Monterey County Superior Court Case Number 18CV871, uh, pending litigation. Uh, the board heard from counsel on uh, the status of that case, and there's no reportable action. And same with 4C, Conference of Legal, Legal Counsel, Potential Litigation, Government Code Section 54956.9D4. Uh, the board heard from counsel, and there's no reportable action. Thank you. OK. 
Okay, the next item is uh, roll call, please. Supervisor Parker? Here. Supervisor Phillips? Here. Supervisor Adams? Here. Mayor Edelin? Here. Council Member O'Connell? Here. Council Member Morton? Here. Council Member Hoffa? Here. Mayor Rubio? Here. Council Member Alexander? Here. Mayor Carbone? Here. Mayor Gunter? Council Member Garfield? Here. Council Member Reimers? Here. Kathleen Lee? Present. Nicole Hollingsworth? Here. Erica Parker? Here. Todd Muck? Here. Dr. Diffenbaugh? Here. Steve Monterazzo? Here. Andre Lewis? Here. Colonel Ford? Here. Bill Collins? Here. We have a representative from Monterey Peninsula College? For Dr. Tribley? Yes, Martin. Thank you. Lisa Reinheimer? Yes. And Dr. Moore? Here. We have a quorum. Very good, thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda is consent agenda, which is to approve no October 12, 2018 meeting minutes, administrative committee meeting, uh, Veterans Issues Advisory Committee, Wastewater Oversight Committee, failing wage status report, building removal financing update, and public correspondence to the board. Did you want to give update on one? Yes, uh, Chair, members of the board, on item uh, 7E, uh, since this was sent to you just recently, we received some additional hours <coughs> and number of workers from the great city of Marina from the Leia and Viosa projects. The, that's an additional, there's 764 workers 62% of which are local, and there's an additional 48,952 hours to be added to the numbers in your board report. All right, thank you. Is there anybody on the, the board that would like to pull anything for further consideration? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anybody in the public have anything they would like to pull? Anybody in the public have any comment, uh, public comment on, on anything? on the consent agenda. Okay, I'll in entertain a motion. And that's, except a, okay, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? In your question. So my question as to um, the minutes in the motion, as recited on page three of our staff report, indicates that the board moved to form a JPA cooperative. In fact, the motion was, as I went back and reviewed the tape to be sure, the clarification was given by who was chairing then, uh, Director Parker. The motion was to proceed with the HCP and continue to the discussions of what would be in a potential JPA and Mr. Hoffa's addition, including an analysis of all potential funding. The minutes actually say there was a motion to approve a JPA, to form a JPA, and that was what the motion directed. We had a discussion about removing the word form. Yes. I just make a motion to bring that back at a later time, giving the clerk the opportunity to look at the minutes, the video, video. to confirm it's, everything. It's Sir. at about one hour and 40 minutes. Is there a second? Thank you. There's a motion and a second to continue this to the next meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next is uh, business items. A presentation by MCWD annexation application status by Keith Vander Martin. Thank you, Chair Rubio, board members, and Executive Officer Hulamard. Uh, Keith Vandermotten, Marina Coast Water District. I'm here to provide just a pretty quick update on where we are in our annexation process. If I can get this to move forward. We are
are moving forward faster than this presentation, I assure you. <laughs> Um, actually, I'll just go ahead and speak to this, and if we can get it to go, we can get it to go. Uh, this is really our second go-round from the annexation process. We started back in 2010, and at that time, there were some issues with re regard to the, the boundaries and with a potential overlap with Seaside County Sanitation District that really brought that first process to a halt. Uh, in 2015, the process was reinitiated, and in that time, uh, we've put a lot of work into getting the initial study completed, working on the updated maps, and working with uh, Seaside County and trying to coordinate that process. And that culminated in us submitting an application in April of this year. Following that, uh, Marina Coast was sued uh, with our application, uh, but I can say that uh, we settled on that. The party settled in September, and so we're back on track with moving ahead. And so the next steps really are to update that application as a result of that settlement. So some of the maps, some of the descriptions were impacted by that settlement. And so we are working on updating that application so that LAFCO can recirculate that. We also need to continue working with Seaside County. I think there's still some uh, coordination that we need to resolve there, but we are optimistic that we can get to a point where we can find a way to avoid any potential overlaps in service area in the future. And we're targeting to go in front of LAFCO in January to start the public hearing process. And so meeting with LAFCO, they believe that's still a very realistic target. And the public hearing process is about a six-month process. There's both pre- and post-public hearing steps. Each take about three months. And if we meet this schedule, then our target to excuse me, complete our annexation is looking at July of next year. Just to summarize really what the annexation is really all about, the annexation is really about the, the areas that MCWD currently serves. So that's what's included. Um, there's also a small area within the central marina area that we currently serve that was missed the last go around, a small uh, church and school area which will be included in this annexation. And then future annexations are gonna be a part of any land use approvals. So any land use approvals as we move forward, the annexation will be included within that process. Again, the areas we're talking about within this are areas we currently serve. So this isn't about <coughs> extending service. This isn't about proposed development. It's not a CEQA project. It's really just looking at what's currently served today. And the two <coughs> key agreements that really define how that service is being offered today is the 1998 water wastewater facilities agreement between Marina Coast and Fora, as well as the 2001 quick lane deed where the water wastewater systems and water rights were deeded over to Marina Coast. So the result when we are done, what we're talking about here is an expansion of the area, the current uh, sphere of influence and service area of the district is 3,116 acres. So it'll be expanded by 5,347 acres. And now customers within that 8,463 acre area, all those customers at that point will be able to run for and vote for the uh, board of directors from Marina Coast. So at that point, all the areas currently served by the district will have full representation, full opportunity to run for the board and vote for board members. This is what currently is the service area and sphere of influence. And when we are done, the map to the right, to my right, is uh, what we originally had put in the application and the map closer to me is how it looks following the settlement. So it's mostly the same. Um, and so this is what's going to be in our upcoming application. And so with that, I would open it up to any questions if that's appropriate. Are there any questions? Okay, any questions from the public? Uh, since there's twice as many customers on the former Ford Order as there are in the city of Marina, I believe you have almost doubled the number of connections. Uh, how do you plan to divide the, uh, uh, you're going to increase the board numbers, so you're going to have just five? Are you going to have more representatives from the city? Uh, you now have over, you know, as a foot, so, oh, I can't remember, 3,000. You've got a whole bunch of, you may have 8,000 acres, but you've got twice as many customers on the former Ford Order as you do in the city of Marina. Are you going to change the representation so that you have more members on the board, or are you just going to leave it for five? And let's see if there's any other. Hi, Lisa Berkeley. 
Ashley, a resident of Marina. Just a quick question about the timeline. Um, you mentioned six months. When does that begin, and can you give a little more details about that? Thank you. Are there any other questions from the public? Yes, I just wanted to go back and look at that map again. Does that include the areas of East Garrison, future the East Garrison in the annexation? It does. I don't have a pointer here, but it does. Those currently being served. Any other service. questions? Okay, I'm bringing it back. Yeah, so, um, so I just answered East Garrison one. As far as the timeline, the six months starts in the, from the public hearing process, so if we can get to LAFCO in January, then the six months starts from that period. As far as the number of board members, by law, a county water district, which Marina Coast is a county water district, is re required to have a five board member. And so the number of board members won't change. Um, but you're looking at at-large type uh, voting. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Is there any... Um, questions from the board or discussion on this all right then we'll move on to what, you, what we've all been waiting for the transition planning process update mr. Hulamart. yes uh, chair Rubio members of the board uh, I think I think all of you have received by email a number of documents over the course of the last week and we know of at least three potentially more versions of the draft resolution that are out for review. Uh, we did provide at your table our best effort so that you could have in front of you what we'd been receiving during the course of the last eight or nine days. Uh, during the course of this week, there have been several jurisdictions that have had individual meetings and discussions about the transition plan and what it means for them. And uh, I think Forest Staff has attended three or four or five or six meetings in the course of the last 10 days or so. Uh, I want to thank all those jurisdictions for opening up their doors to allow us in. And Sherry Damon will provide a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation. Authority Council is here to respond to any questions you might have. Good afternoon, board, uh, chair, members of the board, public. Sherry Damon, uh, risk manager. Um, this will be my shortest transition plan presentation. I always say that and we have a lot before us today, but today we're just going to talk about the facilitator status. At the last board meeting on October 29th, the board authorized um, for a staff to go ahead and do an RFQ to bring a facilitator on board to assist the jurisdictions in entering into regional cooperative agreements to try to implement transition. Some are all parts of the transition plan. That was released on November 6th, and the timeline um, is set forth to hopefully announce a selection by December 7th. Um, there are members from the administrative committee who have volunteered to be on that um, interview panel for the selection. And so just wanted to give you an update on that. It's up and going, and it is on the FORA webpage right now for those members who would like to submit their applications to try to facilitate these agreements. Alternative resolutions. So let's talk about that. You have, as um, our executive officer said, a packet of information. We've tried to compile uh, a list, and I'm not going to go through all of them in detail. It just would not, um, I don't think I could do it, quite frankly. But what you have is your first item number one is a transition plan resolution. It says November 2nd. That has a minor modification in it that happened after the board packet was released, and it has to do with paragraph 2.1.12, which deals with insurance policies. So your last version had the insurance policies terminated. We have changed that language to say that the insurance policies terminate on the expiration of their expiration date, unless otherwise identified. Um, in the plan, and in particular, we've had to address the pollution liability um, insurance policy, which lasts until 2024. Fora is a first name insured, so that paragraph has been modified to specifically address those situations, and that is your number one tab. In all other respects, it's the same as what was in your board packet. Document number two, or in your um, 
on your list. It's called the Alternative Resolution. Um, that is the one that was distributed earlier this week to the four board members, um, submitted to us by uh, members Garfield, Hoffa, and Parker. And that is in your, your packet as um, document number three. We've tried to provide red lines where appropriate. Number four is a hybrid transition plan resolution. It's working off the number two alternative transition plan that was submitted by Garfield, Hoffa, and Parker. And we tried to, working with Authority Council, we tried to work on a, a version that um, tried to keep the some of the spirit and intent, but um, also make it, um, from Authority Council's perspective, um, both CEQA compliant and meeting the provisions of the FORA Act, um, the 67700, what happens if you don't agree. Um, the last tab is the City of Marina Alternative Transition Plan, and we've included a red line to the October 29th version of the FORA resolution for your reference. So you can see how it compares to what was submitted to the FORA board. So it's not a comparison between alternatives, it's as Senator Monning had recommended, working off one document. We started with the October 29th version, and we've tried to provide the red line copies to that October 29th version for consistency. So I'm going to try to give you a very high level brief summary. So the transition plan resolution, as revised, um, addresses the assets, liabilities, obligations. It provides for agreements and the modification of the plan. It allows for a negotiation process. Um, it utilizes the implementation agreements formula, and it did receive a CEQA opinion, which is in your packet um, before you that it is not and does not qualify as a project for CEQA purposes. The alternative transition plan resolution, unfortunately, as it was drafted, does not um, appear to assign assets, liabilities, or provide um, what happens if you don't agree. It's a, an agreement to agree primarily. Um, it does have a lengthy negotiation period through December 30th of 2019. Um, but uh, that what that does is that shortens the time for implementing whatever those agreements are. So we all know and we've discussed um, that we have to go get assignments of the contracts from third parties like the Army has to agree to whoever is going to succeed for a, to certain types of obligations. So um, it takes a little bit of time for the Army to um, give those approvals and to receive the signatures that we need to implement that. So December 30th is, is um, maybe an issue. And our uh, Authority Council and CEQA Council have opined that CEQA review would probably be required for this particular version of an alternative transition sure. plan. Sherry, that December 30, 2018 should be 2019, correct? That's what I meant, yes. That's what I meant. It's It goes for a full year is the way I understood the alternative, and I apologize for the typo. Thank you. The next one is the hybrid. Um, and again, I have apparently I had 2018 on the brain. So um, it tries to use as much of the alternative transition plan um, declarations and revisions as possible. There are some clarifications in there. Um, it does make a, a provision for an assignment if there are no agreements, and it provides for modifications as we progress through um, the process. It does request a shortened uh, negotiating time frame of June 30th, that should be 2019, um, to correspond more closely with your last year capital improvement program, your last year budget, and other items. We're going to be going through that in the June-July time frame next year, and so we kind of like to have, it would be helpful, I think, in terms of um, trying to figure out what goes into those documents, um, who's going to take what and, and what is left, if anything. And it did obtain a CEQA opinion. It's not a project. So with those two modifications, making the assignments if there are no agreements um, and allowing modifications that actually met with our CEQA attorney's approval that it would not be a project. Last night at about 4.30, and maybe even later for the actual resolution, we received a, the Marina Transition Plan Resolution. And this is my very quick 
um, look see. I have not fully analyzed it, but it does appear to address some of the assets, liabilities, and obligations. Um, it does appear to have a fundamental some fundamental differences in the assumptions in how it proceeds through, um, and implications that are different from the alternative transition plan um, version and the version uh, the first version that's in your packet today. Um, came in yesterday and no authority council or final CEQA council review on whether or not it needs any additional um, CEQA analysis. All of the versions, I think, um, continue to have these some of these key legal issues. Based on the um, correspondence that we've been seeing from LAFCO and from others, every single version has an issue of one sort or another. Um, whether it is a LAFCO for a jurisdictional and power issue, a survival of the document, the policies issue, or CEQA issue. So there is no magic version here. And so because of that and because of where we are with so many different versions, I think instead of the recommendation that's in your packet, um, staff recommendation would be to refer the entire packet of information to the attorney group. Uh, to try to harmonize those alternative versions if they can um, and to obtain um, member jurisdiction staff analysis on the competing versions and then to return to the board either at a special meeting in November or the regular December meeting. And that concludes my presentation. Any questions? Yeah. <coughs> That's right. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the, could you remind me who's part of the attorney group? Who makes up the attorney group? <laughs> sure. The attorney group is comprised of LAFCO Council, all of the city attorneys of the member jurisdictions. I think the city of Salinas is city attorney is the only city attorney that has not participated in the attorney group. Thank you. And could you just back up a couple of slides, The, the um, that one? There we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just didn't get all the little things down, so thank you. Mr. Reader. May I ask a question? Um, the question is, may I move sp staff recommendation this time? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's have uh, public comment first, and I'll take it right, for, right after that. Is there public comment? OK, your, your motion is to move staff recommendation. Yes. Second. There's a motion to second to approve the staff recommendation to refer this to the legal working group. On the, on the second? Yes. I have a question because I have several comments I'd like to make overall. Will I have that opportunity? I'll uh, do it now. Pardon me? Do it now. Oh, do it now. Okay. This may be my final word, so I'm going to take my time. <laughs> I did my own red lettering. I compared October 29th, the very small print that I could get from my computer in today's document, and the, no, the um, alternative. I called it the substitute transition. And here's some things I found that I would like to just note. Uh, and first, I, we all know the word transition, but as a noun, it is a process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. As a verb, it's an undergo or cause to undergo a process, a period of transition. And my conclusion, and I'm speaking as my own conclusion, is that the transition plan is a plan that is a process. And all actions, therefore, need not happen or be completed at FORA's projected sunset date of 2020. So therefore, the staff transition plan is the one I didn't know we'd have all the others so that we'd have today's recommendation should be approved. Three things happen in the uh, alternate plan, more than three changes. But I only spoke to three last year, last month. I had three on my uh, list, and all three were taken out of the alternate plan. So I'm just going to speak to them. Uh, the substitute plan, as it's written, removed the paragraph L last sentence, which was the transition plan imp implementation agreements shall be negotiated and developed for the mutual benefit of all recipients of the EDC property and forest successors, if any. I think that's extraordinarily important for just the concept of what we're dealing with here. This is a mutual benefit. Carmel doesn't have land, but whatever happens on this land will impact the entire community. And the, the reuse authority plan that's in place should continue to be honored. The substitute plan also as written took out this. The board therefore recommends a consideration of the legislature of an extension of FORA Act to meet this blight. Blight, it had to do with the blight need. 
And the last one that was taken out, but others were taken out, but that I had actually written about the month before, are no jurisdiction having land use jurisdiction over or holding property within any pro pro portion of the former Fort Ord shall be entitled to receive any portion or any proportional distribution or assets proceeds unless the jurisdiction has entered into a transition plan implementing agreement approved by FORA. One factual bit of information went on to talk about was removed that in December 2016, the four board members voted to support seeking legislative extension. And that was also documented in November 17th, 2017. Those were factual information that was in the original report and I just question why it was removed. So um, I have, I am in support of, of the original plan. I think if the lawyers can get together and, and blend these two so we have less legal challenges, wonderful. I would be very much in favor of that recommendation by council. Mr. Moore. Just a very, very minor uh, wording suggestion on page 27 of 74. It's page 29, at least in my uh, Adobe Acrobat display of this. But bottom of the page says 27 of 74. It's in the original staff report. In the original staff report. Under 1.4, reuse plan and master resolution, the sentence reads, the board hereby finds and determines that all the underlying land use jurisdictions have or will have general plans which have been found consistent with the base reuse plan. So I'm just asking legal, uh, how can you make a finding will have things that are consistent how can you make a finding about a future event which hasn't yet occurred? I, just a minor wording suggestion. Mr. Alpha. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to address a couple of the concerns that were brought up about the um, alternative proposal. One having to do with sort of respecting the intent of the base reuse plan and that actually is addressed on, gosh, well, it's in, in 1.1 1. Uh, 1. 1 of the alternate plan. Uh, the language that was added reads that this transition plan establishes continuity for the base reuse plan policies and programs. So the intent is that there be that kind of continuity and that there be respect for the base reuse plan on a, on a sort of large, uh, um, on a sort of large level uh, by identifying those policies and programs. The second thing having to do with the blight, the, there was some discussion among the three of us about that and the feeling is that a transition plan is a transition plan. It's not a new base reuse plan. And so whether it was right, whether it was wrong, the original base reuse plan addressed blight in a particular way. It said some of that blight is Ford or reuse authorities responsibility. Some of it is the various jurisdictions. And it had a mechanism for, you know, funding that. And so whether that's, whether that was the best way of going about it or not, uh, it is what it is. And so to sort of at the last minute, especially without continuing fora, to try to sort of uh, address blight in a transition plan. Personally, I would have a problem with that. I, I feel like if we wanted to talk about continuing, um, you know, some sort of fora, then it might be appropriate to revisit the blight issue. But if we're talking about transition, and this is a transition plan, we, uh, I, I didn't feel like that belonged there. Mr. Alexander. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it should be just a yes or no question, but um, my question is, is the uh, member jurisdiction um, sta uh, staff analysis, is, is there uh, to be sought some sort of harmonization there as well, or would that come about with just agreeing with a plan? Are you asking me? <laughs> well, I think... I, I think my note there is that at this point, because all this information has been coming to us rather fast and, and quick, and in particular last night with an alternative one that um, is 
pretty substantially different that the member jurisdiction staff haven't really had a chance to fully analyze and, and vet. Um, not sure if they would be promulgating changes to it, but I suspect that the respective city attorneys would be working with their staff and their um, representatives on kind of their thoughts on making the most legally defensible um, document. Okay, um, Supervisor and then um, Ms. Carter. As, as you may know, our, our board took the position that we couldn't support the transition plan as it is right now. We felt there were some things that still had to be worked through and that was what we felt important to get in and start working on those. I gotta say this alternative uh, transition plan is a lot further away at least from what I think the county <laughs> thought we wanted to have something of some substance uh, but the important thing for us was to and I guess the question is can we get the facilitator in working with us any sooner than we we can uh, that that was what we wanted was to get to have further discussions and get the facilitator in as quick as we could so Uh, yeah, Supervisor, the answer to that question is we got our RFQ out as quickly as we could. We shared it with our colleagues in the cities to look, take a look at that. We got input uh, from, from various folks about that. We got it out as quickly as we could. The process is relatively quick given that Thanksgiving is in between. Um, and so we, we might be able to shave some time off if we can get the interviews earlier. Um, then we can make an announcement quicker but we are trying to do that as quickly as we can. I think they're wound up, we wound up with almost 11 firms recommended, and I'm thinking we're gonna get three, four, five, six submittals, so it's gonna take a little bit to review, figure out who to interview, you do the interviews, and then get the selection. We'll continue to have discussions even before the facilitator. I don't think there's any reason to stop on any part yeah. of an action that the board wants us to move along on, so we'll keep okay. going. Ms. Garfield. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I wanted to underscore um, Director Reimer's point about the mutual benefit, and that's something I think I hear from everybody, and I would like to work it into a preface, um, a statement of intent and principle, and I think that's a very good idea, as the mutual benefit, the fair and equitable, and and, and uh, to the spirit of the, the base reuse plan. So if, if we can find some language there to, to get that in, it sets the good tone. Um, I wanted to also respond to your question about why did the, whatever you call it, the one that we worked on, <laughs> the alternative free hybrid, um, why, why information was taken out about recommending a continuation of FORA for any purpose. And at that discussion we felt that this was to be a complete transition plan. We've gotten very clear direction that this is not a way to say at this point that FORA should be a uh, extended in any way, shape, or form. It is to be a complete transition plan. And so in a couple of places, that suggestion about continuing the CFD or overseeing blight or something else was removed, but, but not because we didn't agree with the principle of it, but because this is a transition plan and we haven't gotten to the step of whether that transition plan will do what everybody wants it to do and therefore we should look at alternatives. Um, I, and I do have a question about is that we've, all of us are coming up with points that we want to make sure get included in that. Um, clarifications, like one that, it, that we talked about a lot, for example, was which CIP are we going to hang this on? Is, is, that, is it the current one? Is it the one we have at the end of, of FORA? And so um, in Marina's, for instance, the language of the final year CIP, the final year, that wording was taken out. But we felt that that was a very important piece. And I wanted to see how we can give direction to the group of attorneys crafting a legal one so that at the policy level it says what we want it to say. Um, and I think, and I wonder if we can take an opportunity here to collect those thoughts and ideas to make sure we're getting the direction in the right tar target. So it's sort of a comment and sort of a question. Jerry. A reference the, the idea of blight was brought up and um, I, I agree it's not really germane to a transition plan however uh, looking at it from a point of an advantageous 
if we were to go for a bond using fora as the base we've only got 19 months to go it'd be a lot easier to get a bond based on fora than it would be for individual jurisdictions now i know that we have uh, two jurisdictions that want to remove blight which is outside the purview of the original base reuse plan and that's that's to be commended we all want to get rid of blight but that blights to be removed it's not just because it's blight because they want to get rid of that so they can build and developers can come in and build nice buildings and, and help their communities that's fine but the the concept was that all five land use jurisdictions would use their property tax to pay off the bond to put to uh, remove blight in only two of the jurisdictions well, I just threw out an idea for everybody to think and that is uh, everybody has to have skin in the game I have no problem in helping two of the land use jurisdictions remove their blight as long as the, those jurisdictions help Monterey and Delray Oaks do our, our building also. We don't have blight, but we have no infrastructure. So if the bonding were somehow to be used to pay for a, a blight removal and infrastructure development so all the land use jurisdictions could, could uh, use that bond to help the development afford further, I think that'd be a good compromise where we could all buy into. I just wanted to thank everyone for their clarification and for uh, considering the philosophical aspects of, of what we're dealing with as well here. Um, one thing that I would want to also add is that we've been told by outside voices, including our legislative representatives through the m months that we've talked about this, that there is more uh, to be gathered, which was what Mr. Edelin said, by working as a combined unit for getting the whole, a whole body is going to have a better way of moving forward with this property than uh, a single entity and that's we've been told that by several different ones and most recently if I read the letter correctly I think it was from Landwatch that not having a unit um, might to oversee the ongoing activities might make us uh, uh, um, eligible to have a CEQA challenge so I think that uh, that while indeed we are not voting on a going forward, maybe we should vote on whether or not this body today feels that one of the options, as some of the ent entities have said, that a continuation of a fora sort of entity, and that might begin to address the potential challenge on the CEQA issue that was brought up in that letter. Um, I'm more on the philosophical than I am on the legal, but I just bring that up as a consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to say that um, as a participant on uh, one of the alternatives, uh, one of the things that we were trying to do, and I appreciate the, um, the staff's recommendation today to have uh, the attorneys look at it, um, a lot of the um, of the language that we put in or left in um, is um, it's uh, expressing intention, fair and equitable, um, you know, mutual benefit. Um, so some of the things that we were doing really sort of were policy rather than um, every, um, you know, I and T of legal stuff because that's not who we are. Um, what we were trying to do was change uh, any of the language that we could find in a fairly short period of time that... Um, uh, was the the kinds of things that we were hearing from jurisdictions or um, other attorneys that um, might exceed FORA's authority um, and might only be able to be accomplished through negotiated agreements. So we were trying to um, get the sort of the legal sticking points out. Um, so, you know, things like mandating revenue sharing and ordering jurisdictions to uh, complete certain CIP projects. Um, we, we tried to tone that, uh, express that in a different way. And, it, and we were also looking to um, get around some of the CEQA uh, challenges and arguments that we've been hearing about and get the um, the commitment to the base reuse plan back to the programmatic level, which is the level of CEQA and environmental review that has been done so that we're not changing the anything sufficiently to trigger uh, the need to um, to do CEQA. So we were we were working on those broad concepts and and 
really uh, most of the items that um, that Sherry had put up on that slide that I asked her to go back to um, were things that we were talking about and trying to resolve with as few changes to FORA's uh, offered a transition plan um, as we possibly could. So that was kind of our idea and uh, uh, I for one really appreciate having the attorneys take a look at it and really make it um, um, a legal document. One thing I wonder if the maker and seconder of the motion would um, accept in the motion, maybe just as direction, but maybe um, explicitly in the motion, is to check with LAFCO. Um, the, oh, that was another area. We tried to, um, we did remove a, a section that was basically trying to tell LAFCO what we thought their authority was. I think we need to leave that to them. Um, but I think it would be good, uh, seeing their most recent letter, be good to check with LAFCO to see if turning in a transition plan that identifies the issues and talks about uh, the negotiating of these agreements, um, hopefully to be completed by June of 2019, I think you're suggesting. Um, but will they accept a plan that lays out that process, as has been pointed out, a transition as a process, is that, would that be acceptable to them that doesn't have every single detail ironed out um, by December of 2018, but rather establishes a process? Because um, I think their major concern is having LAFCO be saddled with a role of um, assigning um, or creating agreements. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful and would would like to ask that uh, we check with LAFCO to see if, if we can avoid um, giving them responsibilities they don't think they have, um, could, can they accept a plan that lays out the, the path? Ms. Morton. So the city of Marina has taken a look at this and council looked at it and based on the attorney's working group, I don't know what you call it for sure, but the attorney group, many of the issues raised were um, identical among our different legal counsel and had a great deal of concern about what is the authority under the law for assignment and looking at what those legal challenges were. So the city of Marina's plan, it too endorses the base reuse plan, the uh, master resolution and in particular calls out that all of us would sign an agreement that we would continue with prevailing wage for development, first generation development on former Fort Ord, uh, calling that out in particular in case somebody wanted to challenge that. As to the uh, what we do with the funds, our plan suggests that we be sure that we fund and we put through the, how that would happen with the CalPERS, not only if there's insufficient money in the uh, five million that's been invested in the uh, 115 account, I think it's 115 account, and the other money that's been set aside, but we need to make sure that we have access to funds to fully fund that before for a sunsets. And the CFD, that portion that would be assigned the 30.2% of each CFD anticipated to be approximately 21 million at the sunset date would go to whichever of the entities and because we don't have an HCP as yet, we don't know if that's gonna happen, our plan sets forth that if there's the HCP, it's going to go transfer to that. If not, it will go to fund the HMA, the Habitat Management plan, HMP, excuse me. And if neither of those exist, then that four is gonna come up with a strategy of how we allocate that money to those jurisdictions that have habitat, man, habitat, habitat management responsibilities and that the funds are restricted to that purpose. So that is to enable us to submit a plan in December of 2018 to LAFCO when we really don't know but we have the funds as a designated use for habitat protection. Any additional CFD that would be in FORA's treasury when it sunsets would be applied and paid to those currently under construction roads. To Mayor Edelin's point, that would be South Boundary Road. We're in the process of trying to get South Boundary Road 
if that's under construction, the CFD would go for that money would go forth and complete those contractual obligations. And then if there's any excess, any excess funds in our plan, instead of us as jurisdictions fighting over who should get it, what's the allocation, our direction is to move any excess funds once you pay all your liabilities to the habitat protection, be that an HCP, because I think all of us benefit, all the jurisdictions benefit equally from that base-wide habit habitat. Um, the roads, TAMSI's taking up the regional roads and each jurisdiction being responsible for the roads within their jurisdiction, which currently, I think, at least we've checked with the city of Marina that all of the roads that are in the Fort or the Fort Ord Reuse Authority CIP are in the city of Marina CIP and therefore they are part of what we intend to implement and do. And I would ask every other jurisdiction if that would be true in, in their own individual CIPs. So those are the mechanisms by which we're all able to make sure that we're addressing the mitigations that are our responsibility to this regional vision. So thank you, and thank you for distributing it. So I had a couple, I, I didn't have a lot of time to read as carefully as I would like the Marina proposal. Um, I, I read it this morning quickly and there were three things that um, concern me that I'm wondering if uh, my colleagues could, could explain for me. So the first one is, um, and I think both the forest staff proposal and the alternate proposal, there's quite a bit of preliminary information that seems to have been removed. Um, so just in general, kind of the philosophy behind that. But then in particular, I think it's J that addresses um, sort of the lost funding from the entitled projects. And so that's one question. Um, two, under habitat management, which is 1.1.4 in the marina proposal, it, um, as far as the expense of the habitat funds, it basically permits those funds to be spent for habitat management, which is fine, but then it lines out the language about also funds being used for taking, uh, relating to incidental take permits for future development. So that's one, why, why line that out? And then the third question has to do with transportation, which is I think 2.2 .2 in the Marina proposal. And, um, so the language in the Marina proposal basically assigns TAMSI the responsibility for regional transportation, which makes sense, but then it directs them to develop a regional impact fee for all of those costs. In the past, when we've talked about TAMSI, we've always talked about nexus, and so I'm curious what the thinking is in terms of shifting the funding mechanism from uh, a nexus approach to a regional one. So uh, those are my three questions. Mr. Moore. Um, I'm not clear on the city of Maria's intent, but the, the, the transportation agency's regional fee is based on a nexus um, methodology and it is currently in place to uh, be available uh, to collect fees for regional projects in the forest zone. So um, I, whether that's what was Marie's intent or not, it would in fact be a nexus based um, analysis for projects. Um, it wouldn't be calculated in the, the manner that the current for fee is, is um, calculated. Okay, so are there uh, no other comments? Uh, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. A unanimous transition plan. Yay. The next is... Uh, Chair. Chair. Oh, Mr. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, at this time, we'll, we'll take public comment on items not on the agenda. Seeing none. Items from members. Mr. Chair, is it possible for us to, uh, we've, we've all been taking notes about things we want to make sure get into this philosophical or otherwise. Um, 
Should we send those to Sherry? What is the preferred? Send them to Sherry. Okay. Yep, and just uh, speaking of Sherry, I'd like to uh, publicly thank Sherry for showing up at our <coughs> city council meeting last night, gave an outstanding presentation in, in a reasonably hostile audience, but did an outstanding job, got the mission accomplished. Uh, Sherry, thank you very much. Oh, she had to park five miles away and walk in high heels all the way there <laughs> and back, so if she's, uh, if she's wobbling, that's why. All right, then uh, we stand, oh, I'm sorry. I have something that uh, it's apparently too late to vote on it, but um, and and I I really do think that um, this body needs to dis because of the letter that came in suggesting that without an oversight group for the transition plan and not and I understand the committee pulling that out of the document, but without an oversight that does according to the letter we got today open this up for a secret cha uh, challenge. I think this group needs to decide whether or not an extension of fora is a consideration and I would actually if it's not too late like to move that we recommend that we can't do that we can't it's do not it. on the agenda. it's on the agenda okay well I would like that to be on an agenda even if I'm not here because I think it's part of the big picture this is a process and I understand and recognize the work that everyone's doing to identify the process, but we are, I think, going to be challenged if indeed we don't have some mechanism greater than individual jurisdictions to, to hold this plan together. And I would just recommend that become a discussion item. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items for members? I uh, just, you made some points, Jan, about the letters that we got today. And one of them talking about that the policies and programs in the reassessment indicating they had not been adopted or implemented, that those had not been completed as of 2012, the reassessment time. Are, has everything been completed, adopted, is in everybody's general plans? I, I, I'm not expecting an answer this minute, but I, I would like to make sure because all of us are advocating for implementation of a reuse plan, it should be complete. Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I would like to thank all those who have sacrificed to defend the nation and condolences for those who have lost homes and life in the recent California fires. <laughs>